then uh, after that section, uh, Matthew LaPierre coming in to, to follow up uh, one of his idols, Ollie Herbert, uh, which I know was a treat for him, and obviously he holds his own just well. <laughs> like a fun stack of harmonies to listen to. You should put on my rhythm guitars underneath it too because it totally makes it. Bum, 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 I've, bum. I've gotten better at organizing my sessions since uh, we recorded this, so excuse me while I navigate all over this. There we go. <laughs> Back to the bottom. <laughs> I don't know where I am. Here we go. <laughs> Cool part. It's, you know, makes my guitar part sound way cooler. I'll tell you that. That's ridiculous. And now back to uh, Mr. Jimmy Bell. Yeah, that crazy guy. The left hander from hell. Funny part is, is that Jimmy, like those harmonies at the end, like we'll cobble together like two of his solos in real time and then be like, can you harmonize this? And you'll see him like, no, <laughs> no, that's not it. And then, like literally 45 seconds later, he'll do, yeah. and you can just solo and then, it. And then, uh, yeah, this section here. Just, it's insane. Some Conrad stuff. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jimmy's like the bluesy Conrad. Um, and this part here, this might be the first appearance of a wah pedal on Lost in Yeah, you gonna say. wah pedal for him on that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I, he's like, hey, Betty, can you, can you do the wah on this for me? <laughs> uh, cool. So I, I, I don't want to take total credit for that solo. That was 90% you, I think. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. much me, though. Yep. <laughs> All drums are insane, which you probably saw it on some people could hear. And again, I want to reiterate, because we, we said this on the last one we did for Catnip High, but this, this song, Paul doesn't listen to these songs ahead of time. He doesn't practice to them. He doesn't know the parts. He basically just linearly goes through stuff, and Corey and I will be like, well, this is what we were thinking. And sometimes Corey will even go as far as like programming like, you know, level 101 drums. But... He just he just pulls this out of his ass. Like the first take, he'll be like, eh, and he'll get frustrated, and then he just by the fourth take, it's like this. Yeah, at, at most, it's just a nudge and like, hey, we want this to have like this kind of like energy, and then he can just take it from there and, and does his crazy Paul shit. <laughs>
the thing is, is like, you can obviously go on to like, you have every metal band in the world using Superior Drummer now, it seems. So you can just make everything sound like that. <laughs> Paul, in the room, sounds like that. Which is yes. what makes me happy because like it, it, you don't need any trickery with them. It, now it's one of those things where almost metal bands take it for granted having these insane drummers or you know guitar players that program drums. But this guy actually plays the drums like that, and it's it's amazing to watch. Yeah, there's obviously some sample reinforcement in there, but I can play the overheads to hear his kit. And this is probably when I was using the MK 012s which sucks. <laughs> A very thinned out room mic, but. His actual kick there. I mean, he, he <laughs> the funny part is, is that you have to compress it because he actually he plays with a lot of finesse. He's not uh, Dave Grohl at all like if anything like he pussy hits everything because he plays with so it's, it's really just finesse he's like he's like a ballet dancer on the drums <laughs> and admittedly at this point like the recording and mixing was still a trial and error thing and uh trying to fit the drums over an orchestra and crazy guitars you know the beefing them up was the only way i could definitely get that to cut through but, and the truth is this was really our i this is like schooling for how to be producers and engineers for for me at least so like uh, i was using 150 dollar overhead mk012 octavas at this point which are just little pencil mics to give you an idea now like we're recording lost symphony we're using c12 akg overheads with match 60s diaphragms they're probably fifteen thousand dollars a piece you know so they, like they sound five percent better the five percent better <laughs> no they sound substantially better than those mk012s but you know point is is that we we were learning like yeah. everything that you hear every song like if it's if it's like the reverse of game of thrones it's because like, we literally have gotten better as engineers and being able to fit this much crap into a song is an art so to make the drum sound like you know you go into a mix and you're like make that bigger make that bigger yeah make that bigger like well how do you make everything big just do it Corey. and i sat here and cried and did it uh, you took a lot of uh, classes online, didn't you? Yeah, I was, I was on YouTube University. I was watching all sorts of mix tutorials. I was trying to do everything. I was buying thousands of plugins I didn't need. Um, you know, but I, I tried to cram an education uh, as much as I could into the process while also mixing the record at the same time. So it's funny going back to these sessions and looking at what the hell was I thinking there? Well, and, and I mean, I, I got to tell you, the thing that changed the most is definitely how we recorded the violins and strings yeah. and things. Uh, the, the new music that will be coming out is pretty much all organic. None of it, like, we're not using any samples, we're not programming orchestra or mostly anything. If anything, it's like synths on top of, we have we have real horns in some of the next music. Yeah. Um, you know, and obviously it's Siobhan by herself playing um, violin versus now we have Marco on cello and Susanna. And, you know, having a three piece of three virtuoso uh, string players, it, it's so different versus trying to make it sound like a real orchestra that when you peel away all this stuff, you're like, oh, it sounds kind of like Nintendo. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we didn't know an orchestra at the time. All we had was Siobhan. We're like, she's an orchestra. Yeah. And even her, it was like, play over the program stuff because we already spent all the time on it. <laughs> so if you listen to like, this is the, the, the MIDI orchestra here. Is this grouped? I can't tell. Okay, good. So like, this is kind of the stuff that, that Brian would send the MIDI to me uh, and I would put it through my um, sample libraries and try to like do a little bit of like humanization and make it sound somewhat uh, not like a fake band. And then we did have then Siobhan come in, and these are her layers on top and of And just that. so you know, Brian is a genius at doing all this kind of stuff, and it's funny because he has no education as far as like doing any kind of arrangement um, other than you know taking piano lessons. And Siobhan would a lot of the times be like, because we, we'd pull up the MIDI, and she'd be like, you know that you can't, this is for viola, like you can't play this on the violin, there's not enough octaves. Or, Brian's like, oh really? Oh, the pack still like, worked. <laughs> yeah, he's like, that's a you problem, you figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> But yeah, the, we did, I think, manage to get to a cool spot, you know, considering how we were figuring out as we went mm -hmm. um, of getting these together to sound, you know, somewhat full. This is the real violin mixed with the MIDI orchestra. I mean, 
mean, I think it sounds pretty good. It works. Uh, and then, yeah, so as we come to the end of the song here, um, more epic drums come in there, and I believe we have Matthew LaPierre finishing us off. And that, that was clearly just a random take of, Matt, please finish the song. And, and the thing is, is you have to understand that at the time, it was a much bigger deal now, because what is Matt, like 28, 30 now? Something like that? I don't know. I can't keep track of that. But he, he was like 21 or something when he recorded. Like, he, he was a little, a little baby. <laughs> so much better than me. that sucks <laughs> <laughs> yep. he's ridiculous um but yeah so that that's a it's a solid song that i feel like may may have slipped under the radar a bit in terms of uh just exposure it wasn't a single or was it a single did we do a single no, i, I, I don't, don't know a single for that but I, I will say that as far as the piano is concerned that this is definitely one of my favorite songs and it was pretty much a piano song that had been taken and i and i find that a lot of the stuff that has for me, that makes me the happiest with this band is when it starts off as a piano thing and then turns into a full orchestra. And I can say that with the new music that we have coming out, it's definitely, we've tried writing guitars and stuff first and then Corey's like, hey, you kind of just sound like every other metal band. And when we go back and write piano first or strings first is usually when it comes together and it sounds like this. So um, the, we start that way. Yeah. Yeah. So you can stay tuned for more uh, piano-based orchestral weird music that yeah. will be coming soon. With better sounding uh, everything. Yes, better sounding. Everything. Everything's better. <laughs> it's, it's just better, man. But thank you guys for watching. As Appreciate always, um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, we, will, we will check in the, there and we'll either answer them in the comments or maybe we'll do a video answering the questions if there's enough that are kind of similar. And there's stuff that you guys want to see or whatever, like feel free on any of our videos just, you know, to just comment and let us know because uh, we love you. Yeah, stay tuned for more. LostSymphony.com